Sharon, Micah, this pursuit started with Monterey Park P uh, Police Department in pursuit of a what they're saying a, a suspected DUI driver. Now, the, it ended up being that the CHP took it over after it being on surface streets and on the freeway for a while. Uh, we are right now in Irwindale. Here we go, a northbound turn coming right at us uh, onto uh, Live Oak. You can see the vehicle. They're driving at relatively slow speeds. In fact, just about a minute and a half ago, they had the vehicle stopped on the 605 freeway northbound. It had pulled over and they were in a felony stop uh, position, but the car took off at once again on the uh, CHP. So now here we are stopping at a light here. It looks like he's gonna wait for the green light to go. And uh, very little traffic out here at all. But again, the vehicle not moving, now moving. Uh, we'll see which direction the vehicle goes. We'll see if they try a pit maneuver here. The vehicle's moving slow enough, and there, it's a wide enough street, but we'll see if they try that or not. Uh, but at this point, the pursuit continues. It's been going on for about 20, 25 minutes now. Uh, again, started in Monterey Park with Monterey Park PD trying to pull a vehicle over, and they handed it off to the CHP. And this driver did pull over on the side of the northbound 605 freeway. Um, Gil, had officers gotten out of their cars at that point before the driver took off, or did it not get to that point? They did. They actually had the freeway stopped. Uh, all northbound lanes of the 605 was stopped. As uh, we were approaching, we could see it in a distance. The freeway was stopped. The officers were out of their vehicles giving commands to the driver. They said the driver was agitated and then all of a sudden took off on them. So they're back in pursuit here on uh, surface streets here in Baldwin Park. Is he alone in the car here, uh, Gil? Yeah, let's look. Uh, let's see if you guys can see better than me. Uh, it looks like Nobody in the passenger seat, possibly something in the back seat. It's hard to see. It's a little dark right now, but we'll maybe wait for a better chance at that. The night sunlight from the helicopter is overhead, and we'll see if that helps. Uh, well, now that it's stopped, let's come back in here and see if you guys can see any, th any activity in that. No, it doesn't vehicle. look Looks as like though anyone's just in the, the car. Driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other than the driver and yeah. moving at slow speeds uh, on surface streets where very few people are around at this time of night. Um, right, uh, Baldwin Park adjacent to uh, Irwindale, uh, this uh, largely an industrial area, the 605 freeway. Uh, and the Baldwin Park area uh, north of the 10. So we're looking at uh, Irwindale, which would be right along the 210. Uh, so 605 and 210. Uh, and again, it's, it's a largely industrial area. So th that's good news. And you have a driver that's moving uh, at relatively slow speeds. Uh, so you see at this point CHP uh, biding their time and, and trying to get the suspect to cooperate without uh, having to make a more offensive move, uh, which would likely be a pit maneuver attempt, though the driver is moving at such slow speeds it might not even be effective at this point. Uh, but, th but they're dealing with uh, a situation here now where it looks like, again, a suspected DUI driver uh, is the only person in the car. Yeah, those are good points. Right now, River Grade, we, the driver's been on River Grade before. We're coming up to Arrow Highway in Irwindale. So uh, the vehicle was on surface streets for a while through Irwindale, made its way down to the 10 freeway, went west on the 10 freeway to the 605, and then that's when the stop was made on the vehicle, and then it took off just about uh, three or four minutes ago now. Here we go, a uh, left-hand turn there, and we're going to keep going at very relatively slow speeds here. Let me bring up our... Uh, speedometer for you so you have that but uh, again slow speeds right now not a lot of traffic out here uh, at this hour yeah and uh, to get to that point where we would see a pit maneuver the speeds have to be uh, at a certain level about right about now like 35 45 miles per hour would be just about right to have an effective uh, pit maneuver, um, but uh, that's not happening just yet. Uh, they're looking for the right moment to do that, it seems. And uh, but not really any reckless driving right now, considering this is a suspected DUI driver. Um, he seems to, you know, be going at slow speeds on on these uh, on these surface streets, and uh, not too much traffic, like you mentioned. This is a uh, Micah, a um, industrial area of Irwindale, um, and we, do we see any? Uh, are we close to any freeways that we are uh, that he could possibly get onto? Yes, sure. In fact, right coming up to the 605 once again. Here we'll see if the driver chooses. There's the ramp for it. That's going to be a northbound on 
on-ramp there for the 605, and yes, definitely taking it. So we're right near this Santa Fe Dam uh, recreation area here off to the right-hand side of the screen, and now the vehicle heading towards the 210 freeway, and we have... Uh, and there goes the signal briefly from Sky 5 as we're tracking a suspected DUI driver in and around the Irwindale uh, Baldwin Park area. Uh, now just yeah, getting back the on the freeway, 605 back. northbound, heading uh, very close to the 210 okay. freeway. Uh, it looks like about a mile south of the 210 interchange. There'll be a, a, a west 210 or east 210 option here. Uh, and Gil, you're back with us live and it's picking up speed. Picking up speed, uh, approaching the interchange in about uh, about a mile. And the speed is picking up. Let's come in tight, and you'll get that accurate speedometer reading there. Uh, 80 miles an hour, that's pretty quick. That's the fastest we've heard of it going at this point. And as we come out to a wide shot, you'll see the traffic starting to build a little bit here as the driver's going to have a decision to make east or westbound on that 210. Yeah, so in the pursuit now here on the freeway uh, going uh, 80 in the 80 miles per hour and uh, you know this is uh, you know we want it to be on the freeway as we say but the problem here is that we've got a DUI driver, a suspected DUI driver. It looks like he's taking the 210. Is that what's happening here? There might be an off ramp here as well uh, that would take you right into Irwindale uh, and it looks as though that's what he's done here mm -hmm. uh, yes. and bypass the east yes. the eastbound westbound there. He goes right over the 210. So back onto surface streets and it's going to be again a largely industrial area here north of the 210 uh, and this road will dead end. Uh, and the driver will have a choice to make again. It's turn left or turn right. But we saw 80, 85 miles an hour. Then on surface streets, much slower. So in this particular case, I think CHP uh, it obviously wants the driver to surrender. Uh, but in the absence of that logic, uh, moving more slowly on a surface street with not a lot of people around uh, seems like better sense. Yeah, no doubt. It's. Uh that's really what we want to see is slow speeds here uh, on surface streets for sure. The CHP still holding back on trying to do anything uh, aggressive with the pit maneuver. They did speak of spike strips at one point. I don't think they were able to get those deployed. That was on the freeway. But uh, at this point, I haven't heard any more yet on that, uh, if they're planning on doing that. Yeah, and then uh, on the surface streets, you know, he has to be uh, making rounds um you know, making rounds that are pretty frequent in going in circles where they would be able to predict uh, where his next, uh, um, where he would be going in order to put those spike strip, put the spike strip out, right? So um, here he is in an alleyway. And you wonder if maybe perhaps he knows uh, this area and is trying to figure out um, where he can ditch his car and, and make a foot bail uh, we do tend to see that happen as well as that uh, these, you know, suspects try their best to, to escape, um, you know, into the neighborhoods here. And sometimes they do get yeah. away. Yeah. And he's going to have an outlet here. He's going to go onto a, another small street there. But yes, definitely. Uh, maybe at this point they'll be able to set up a spike strip in, in this particular neighborhood because of the speed. Those other units that were in trail, let me come out to white shot so you see the extent. There's three units right there. We did see mo more units, but this might be, what is this? Looks He's going like a into a gate area here. So yeah. yeah, possibly. Yeah, um, a driveway, uh, and now it looks like an access road. The gates are open, so access, uh, whether it's been granted or not, uh, the area has been breached, and look at that, right through, oh, he got through. back onto a, got a street, uh, surface street here, and CHP uh, being clearly patient with this driver. He's moving slowly, and Gil, you described him as agitated, uh, and it's not something that law enforcement uh, necessarily wants to stir up further. Mm. No, definitely not. Uh, and, and at this point, the, the driver's not expressing that in the way he's driving that's good right. but was definitely agitated with those officers when he was when the stop was made i don't know if they actually had communication with the driver or if the driver was just uh flailing his arms around inside the vehicle they didn't say specifically what the agitation was but uh, clearly 
not willing to give up at that point, and certainly we see that as it continues here. West Bend on Central approaching Bradburn, and as I come out to a wide shot, once again, we'll see right along the 210 freeway here on the north side of it, and we'll see if the vehicle will have an opportunity to get on the freeway at some point ahead. Yeah, well, at least not here on this street, it, it would look like a, a good opportunity for them to do a pit maneuver here. Not too many cars on, this, on the, on the, the um, street that are parked. I mean, some right there, but uh, at least <laughs> before I said that, there weren't too many cars that were parked over there. But uh, the speeds uh, are slow enough. Well, not maybe too slow. Yeah, you know, Sharon and Michael, sometimes when we see the CHP hold off on doing a pit maneuver, they might know that there might be a weapon on board. We haven't heard that, so, mm. but, you know, a lot of times they may hold off on doing a pit maneuver because they've learned that maybe there's a weapon on board or there's some, some sort of danger that can, uh, that can cause uh, problems for the officers if they did a pit maneuver and ended up side by side with the vehicle. So. Uh, we don't know. We, we're hoping that it's just uh, there's no weapons on board and that uh, they will, this guy will just pull over. But at some point, they're going to want to initiate either a pit maneuver or a spike strip to bring this to an end if it doesn't stop. Driver moving at slow speeds, what you want to see. Uh, and, and sometimes it's not so much an effort to get away as it is an effort to buy time. Uh, to try and figure out what it is you want to do and, and to sort out your thoughts. I mean, trying to get in the head of somebody who's running from law enforcement and doing so at a slow speed, it looks as though, you know, I need time to figure out what I want to do. Now he's communicating with CHP. You can see him, his window's down a little bit, the driver, and he's, and he's put his hand out the window. He's gesticulating. He's saying something, obviously. He's agitated. The w window goes back up and he keeps driving. Uh, but at slow speeds, he uh, in, is buying time uh, and, and you know, trying to figure out what it is he wants to do. Uh, only for a brief moment on the 605 North did we see this at a high speed, 80, 85 miles an hour. But now it's slow speeds on surface streets and just sort of a crawl. And CHP is mirroring the actions of the suspect and moving slowly, uh, but at a distance. Uh, again, a driver that may well be agitated uh, and, and trying to sort things out uh, mentally and emotionally. And officers uh, are not as aggressive as we have certainly seen them be in the past. Well, now the driver has turned into the City of Hope uh, area here now. He's going to go into this parking structure at this point. So definitely a, a change in this pursuit. We'll see if he pops out the other way. I can tell you, though, that uh, the CHP is already coordinating a spike strip to be set up where this driver came in off the, ma off the major street there. Uh, so here at the City of Hope in the parking lot, in the parking structure, and it sounds like they're coming back out. Let me look for another. Oh, there he is, coming out here. Same. Yeah. So this pursuit has been going on uh, since a little bit after 10 o'clock here. Uh, now at the City of Hope in uh, Duarte, and uh, it's a slow speed yeah. pursuit uh, that just went through the City of Hope parking garage, um, in and out. And uh, we have seen so many of these pursuits uh, go into a parking garage, and 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 frankly, uh, you know, the suspect has been able to elude. Um, authorities by getting lost in in the parking garage but this one just popped in and okay. popped right back out onto the surface streets here and uh, slow speed pursuit through the surface streets and uh, going back out and and the chase continues um, for a moment there we saw the suspect communicate with authorities behind him CHP and uh, and then take off again but uh, this has pretty much been what it's like for the last 10 minutes or so after he popped off of the freeway, the 605 North. Um, and uh, as we mentioned, as Micah just mentioned, yeah, he was on the 605 briefly uh, going at high speeds for about um, a few minutes before he popped back off and onto the surface streets here. You see the night sun following this pursuit. So. Uh, just uh, wondering what is uh, going through the mind of this of this suspect here. Um, a suspected DUI driver um, seems to be not driving recklessly, as you would suspect a um, somebody under the influence, but is driving quite slowly and uh, 
you know, just making his way through the city of Duarte as was going through Irwindale, um, Baldwin Park. And it looks like we might have a spike strip that is set up for him as well. Yeah, Gil, you were talking well, they about... certainly have the chance to do that. Yeah, the, yeah you were talking about um, the potential for them to lay one and that there was talk of that. Uh, and, and this would be the ideal time and space for that. Uh, is Irwindale PD obviously aware of this? Um, are, are they in any way assisting CHP? Again, this out of Monterey Park. So Monterey Park PD initiated. CHP took over as it had spent a lot of time on the freeway. Uh, and now we're back on surface streets. Have you heard anything about local agencies, Gil? Well, yeah, no doubt there's going to be assistance for by uh Irwindale PD. I can hear the CHP still talking about spot setting up a spike strip. They possibly had a chance to do that there or possibly under the bridge here. We can't see it. I'm trying to hear what they're saying. It sounds like they may not have had a chance to lay that out. But certainly at these speeds and if it stays in an area for any longer length of time than it just did, they, will, they should be able to get that spike strip in place. So, But as far as the uh, local agencies assisting, for sure they know about the pursuit. It's coming through their city, and they'll do whatever they can, including blocking intersections as the vehicle approaches. So we may see that coming up here sh soon. All right, so uh, here we are on Highland Avenue in Duarte as this uh, pursuit is making its way there, um, going very slowly. Uh, seems to be obeying uh, traffic laws at this moment, uh, but uh, definitely a lot of helicopters in the air following this pursuit right now. Um, thankfully, not too many pedestrians, um, not too much traffic in the area, and it's just making its way slowly through uh, what seems to be a pretty industrial part of town. Yes, for sure. Onto this uh, quiet neighborhood street here. This uh, we'll see if it has an outlet here. I'll come out wide to see what the uh, what it looks like. We're coming up against the freeway once again. It's going to come out to Central Avenue once again. So we'll see uh, which direction of travel the vehicle will take. So this driver uh, suspected DUI out of Monterey Park that has moved along the 10 freeway, the 605 freeway, and has been on and off the freeway here in the Duarte, uh, Baldwin Park, Irwindale area. Uh, from what we can gather visually, the driver is the lone occupant, uh, described at times as agitated, pulled over at one point on the side of the 605 freeway mid-pursuit. Law enforcement was out of the vehicles communicating with him. Uh, and he took off again and has been moving uh, ever since, largely at slow speeds on surface streets. Uh, there was like about a mile and a half run after he took off again on the freeway before he got off the freeway uh, and has remained on these surface streets, driving in circles, pulling in and out of a parking garage at one point, stopping at red lights, fortunately, and again, moving very slowly. Uh, so it's a situation that, that CHP uh, is... is uh, essentially uh, satisfied to manage as they are at this point uh, without being too aggressive, too offensive as we have seen them in the past. Depending on the situation, they handle every pursuit differently and they are they're, uh, handling this one a bit differently than, than others we have seen where they've been a lot more aggressive uh, with the driver. Uh, this is again a, a DUI suspect uh, described as agitated. Uh, law enforcement may well know more than we do about who they're dealing dealing with here uh, and their state of mind, uh, to be clear, uh, uh, as all decisions that help uh, and, and, and facts and evidence that help inform the decisions and, and how they approach uh, a pursuit situation like they're doing now, uh, slowly uh, and methodically, and as Gil said, uh, there's going to be potential for a spike strip in the area here. Haven't seen it yet. Uh, but law enforcement uh, content at this point, Gil, to just stay back and, and move along slowly. Absolutely. But again, uh, just uh, as you drive along the 210 freeway, if you know the area, you know what you're looking at here. There's a few car dealerships on this uh, strip of road here that is just north of the 210 freeway, Gil. Yeah, and this is a change. Pulled into a, 
a, a shopping center here. It's a Target store there. And going on the surface road, we'll see if it has an out. There is a car coming. Oh, that's a, let me look at that real quick. That's going to be local uh, officer there, I believe. But he's going to make a turn there. He saw that. He's going to make a turn back towards the uh, Central Street. So we'll see what happens. But uh, what I was going to say was, uh, you know, the word, uh, I think what's going through the officers' minds right now is that uh, they want to de-escalate this instead of escalating it. So they're, they're laying back, giving this guy some time to think about it. The driver is driving very slow, and that's a positive thing. Uh, for the most part, has been driving slow. Uh, and that's a positive thing to de-escalate the situation. The driver, obviously, is still agitated for whatever reasons, but uh, at this point, they're content with just staying behind him until they can find a solution to bring this to an end. Yo. And, and look at this, a, a CHP officer coming out to lay down a spike strip. Oh, it, it, bound, it bound up on him. He couldn't get it out there, and the driver saw that and decided to turn. So an opportunity miss there with that spike strip that just wouldn't unfold properly. That's unfortunate. They could have got that right out in front of him there. But it was a risky move for that officer, nonetheless, stepping out like that in front of that vehicle to try to get that out there. That's the concern, is, is finding the right, right place to do it so it's safe for those officers. But unfortunately, it didn't un unfold. And the moment they make a move, the driver speeds up. And, yeah. uh, and here's and the 605. Here's yeah. the 605. Right. Well, you read his mind because he's moving in the direction of 605 <laughs> southbound now, uh, and uh, which is uh, essentially uh, back fr from where he came. Uh, this originated in Monterey Park yes. and moved its way into the Irwindale area by way of the 605 northbound. So now we're heading back 605 southbound. Looks like he's abandoned plans to go to mom's house if she in fact lives in Duarte. Right. Uh, and he's moving back uh, toward uh, the situation wh where, it, where it developed uh, and where it escalated very quickly uh, from what we understand. And it was on this very freeway 45 minutes ago that the driver actually stopped, pulled over onto the shoulder of the freeway. Law enforcement was out of the vehicles. They'd stopped traffic on the freeway and it looked as though it was about to come to an end. And the driver said, no, I don't think so, and took off. So the chase has continued ever since that point uh, and has gone in one giant circle, heading now back southbound on the 605. That's right. Uh, Duarte's in his rearview mirror right now, so he's going away from it. And we'll see if he'll try to get off on the next off-ramp and get back onto the surface streets again. But definitely, like you said, going back to where he pulled over, actually just a short distance away from where he first stopped on the freeway. He's going to be passing that soon, and then uh, we'll see which direction he goes. He's got the 10 freeway up ahead, and that will be a freeway he's been on before. Uh, uh, maybe not. He's going, yeah. Yes. Well, there's your chance right oh, there. Oh, look at this. Uh, yes. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Uh, Clearly not yeah. authorized. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, the opportunities uh, have been many, and, and especially on a surface street like this with freeway. no one else around. And back to the freeway we go. Uh, you know, a, a, yeah. and an opportunity missed. They have their reasons, and and, and you watch and wonder uh, what the CHP approach is here. Uh, they're the best in the world at what they do when we're watching a situation unfold like this. Uh, and to watch them employ a strategy is fascinating because it's different every time. Uh, it, one night you'll see them be hyper aggressive with a suspect. The next night you'll see a situation like this, uh, where they're backing off, not uh, wanting to. To, uh, escalate the situation and and it's just it, it, it's so 180 from what we've seen in the past uh, but obviously they have their protocols and and their judgment calls and frankly a lot of this uh, comes down to judgment as well uh, as that lead officer is able to hear what the suspect is saying when he's yelling back at the officers they're, they're trying to gather all the information they can every bit of intelligence they can and data points and, and seeing the state of mind of the suspect you know that may play into this as well uh, okay. We've been watching this for over an hour, and he doesn't stray far from the Irwindale Duarte area on the freeways before getting off the freeway and reversing course on surface streets. And as he moves eastbound on the 10, or the sorry, the 210 freeway, he's approaching the the Irwindale exit here. Uh, and whether he takes it or not, it looks as though at the moment he is, 
Uh, and so what, what yeah. you have here is a pattern of behavior that is becoming increasingly predictable, uh, which is advantage law enforcement. Uh, they have spike strips and an increasing number of units in the area. It's a matter of time and they will continue to corral this suspect and, and deal with them accordingly. And it looks as though they want to use the spike strip. They've, they, they've had it out and it's a matter of time before it happens. It is a matter of time. Absolutely. Uh, that is for sure. Gil, um, thank you so much uh, for taking, uh, taking us over all the cities of Irwindale and, um, and, and Baldwin Hills and uh, Baldwin Park, rather. And um, that is going to do it for us here on the KTLA 5 News at 11. Have a great weekend. Good night, everybody.